Today we're going to begin and talk about the four P's, and uh, the first P is product, and we'll spend the next uh, a couple of lectures talking about product. Uh, specifically today, I want to talk about sort of a, a, a good definition for product and some, some ways that we can classify products and services. Uh, talk about some uh, specifics related to product, branding, packaging, labeling, and, uh, and product services. And um, talk a little bit of, uh, extensively about branding and how, and how brands are managed. And then we'll talk about some of the, for some of the characteristics that make services a little bit unique as a, as a product category. And so we think about product you know, very broadly, and we often think about it as, as, has a, as being something tangible, uh, like, a, uh, like a brand of, uh, like some laundry detergent, something that's, uh, that, that's physical. But we also include into product services, which are sort of activities or benefits or satisfactions offered for sale where you don't get anything back in return as ownership. So you might get your hair cut, your teeth cleaned, you know, some insurance, all those are, are examples of, uh, of services where you don't own anything that's, uh, that's actually tangible. We all also think about experiences, and these are sort of aspects of the product where, where the consumer sort of has a memory of them, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about that in, a, in another minute or so. So we think about product as, as uh, sort of on a continuum. From one side, we've got very tangible goods, and, and that could be, for example, like a tube of toothpaste, and on the other side, we have a service, which is, uh, which is some activity which, which is intangible, and that would be like getting your, your teeth clean. And in the middle, we have some hybrids, you know, sort of a little bit of service and a little bit of tangible. Uh, perhaps if you went to the dentist and got a, um, a new tooth put in, so there's an actual tangible tooth, but there's a service component of getting that, that work done. So that's really a hybrid. And a lot of products have... Uh, a little service component if it's associated with it. Um, so it's, uh, uh, you know, hybrids are probably what most products uh, fall into. And then if we add on experiences, which are those aspects of the, of the, the product that are memorable. So if you, for example, go on a, a cruise ship, well, there are some tangible aspects of that. So the food that you eat and the, uh, and the service aspects, the, for example, someone uh, providing uh, great service in terms of entertainment or, or in terms of, you know, a waiter uh, in the restaurant. But there's also the experience part of it, which is those memories that you take away of walking through the ship and, in, and sort of enjoying the relaxing lifestyle and those sorts of things. So um, product is, is somewhat of a complex mixture of tangible and intangible and, uh, and experiences. Now we look at product on a number of different levels. For example, if you think about a television set, there is a core product, which is the, uh, the picture tube or screen and the, and the electronics that get associated with that. But there are also uh, sort of the, what we call the actual product, which are sort of have a number of other things associated with that, such as the, the features itself. Uh, uh, there are you know, different televisions with different degrees of features. Um, and the design of it, whether it's a sleek, flat screen design or whether it's, you know, sort of more, more conventional and not so, uh, not so contemporary looking. The packaging that's associated with it, the brand name, you know, is it a Sony or is it a Reliant that you might not have heard of? And the level of quality that's associated with it. And then there are, there's the augmented product, which are sort of other associated aspects of the product, such as uh, the delivery and credit that's associated with it service and perhaps installation, the warranty, and, uh, and, and those sorts of are, are, more, are more peripheral. They're still all part of the product, but they're not perhaps as, as, uh, as key as the, as the core product is. Now, in order to simplify uh, the marketing mix decisions associated with different products, uh, marketers divide products into, into four um, sort of consumer product classes. And they're really based on, on how each uh, on how, on sort of the, the shopping effort that goes into each class of products, okay? So let's look at the first one. They're called convenience goods. Here, the, the consumer does not want to spend a lot of time shopping uh, or much effort shopping for these particular products. They tend to be bought frequently, immediately, um, you know, sort of without a lot of comparing one, one product versus another. So there could be staple goods like milk or laundry detergent, uh, goods, you're not going to go from one grocery store to, store to another, you know, finding, 
you know, looking for different laundry detergents, you tend to pick up laundry detergent on your, uh, on your you know, typical shopping trip. They also could be impulse goods like, uh, like candy or, or, um, or, or, or quick magazines that are, that are bought on impulse without a lot of effort. And so as a result, distribution tends to be uh, fairly intense. They tend to be in as many outlets as possible to try to make the shopping as easy as possible. And a lot of these products, as I said, are purchased on impulse, and so you want to have them available as m and, and, and expose them as much to consumers um, as you can. Um, advertising is key. Uh, the, the brand name is really important so that when you stand in front of that, for example, that candy counter, uh, the brands that sort of jump out at uh, the top of your mind are the ones that you'll, you'll probably pick. The whole idea is to try to ease the buying effort. Now, shopping goods are sort of what you typically think of when you're, you're willing to go from one store to another and, and try to compare products and features and benefits and prices. Um, and so you're looking to, to, um, uh, to spend some time comparing the products. And so here, distribution is a little more selective. It's not in absolutely every possible outlet. It's, it's maybe only in, in a few outlets and, uh, and maybe located in a mall. So if you think about a digital camera, uh, there may be five or six places in your community where you can buy a digital camera. It's not in absolutely you know, every type of shopping uh, store. Um, but you can you know, go from store to store and compare on, on price. And, and here, the, the retailer's name is important as well as the brand image uh, in order for you to sort of help you compare one product versus another. Specialty goods um, are quite unique in that uh, companies try to create a, a, an identification, a, a way of um, showing that that product is willing or the consumer should be willing to go and spend a lot of time and effort to find that one particular brand of product. And so if you think about uh, perhaps a Rolex watch where um, there, it's quite exclusive in terms of distribution. It may only be in one um, outlet in a particular area, but consumers who want a Rolex watch are willing to go and spend the effort to find that one unique location where they can buy it. And so here, as I said, distribution is much more exclusive. There's an image of superiority associated with the product and, um, and, and sort of the reputation of the, of the retailer. Now, it's not the amount of effort that the consumer actually does spend, it's what they're willing to spend. Okay? So even though you could go and and immediately go to a store and buy a Rolex, um, the fact is that you're, you're willing to expend a fair amount of effort to go and try to find that one store that offers a Rolex watch. The last category is unsought goods. These are goods where a consumer really doesn't um, sort of th think about them or know about them until somebody brings them to their attention. So something like life insurance or maybe even buying a set of encyclopedias. You know, unless you really are thinking about it and someone brings it to your attention, um, it's not something that you're sort of going out and, and looking for. And so here, heavily promotion and advertising is, is what's driving the, uh, this product category. So let me um, stop and let you think about um, uh, snow tires as an example. Now, in fact, could they be a convenience, a shopping, or a specialty good? So what I'd like you to do is, is think about how, in fact, snow tires could be all three of these and which one you think it is most likely. So pause the tape, do that, and come back and talk about it. <laughs>